Can I close the door, please? So, the last time uh, we finished talking about the case study and we said we needed to make a spreadsheet. So now we're going to make the spreadsheet. So we have three scenarios about volume. This is the normal scenario. Volume is 25,000. Uh, then we have uh, this scenario, which is... Uh, <coughs> do, do nothing. Or sorry, volume at 30,000. And then we have the last scenario, volume at 10,000. Do you understand those three scenarios? This is our number of customers. We have 25,000 customers here. We have 30,000 customers here. And we have 10,000 customers here. Which is better? 13,000. Which is the worst? 10,000. Then we have three exchange rates. This is today's exchange rate that we, if we make a forward contract, it's going to be at this one. 122, right? One euro is $1.22. Uh, this is a strong what? Strong dollar or strong euro? Strong dollar. And this is weak dollar or strong dollar? Weak dollar. Weak dollar. If we do nothing, which is the risk? Stronger dollar or weaker dollar? If we do nothing, which is our risk? We're using dollars to buy euros. Weaker dollar or stronger dollar? Weak dollar, right? That's the risk. We have to pay one dollar forty-eight to get one euro. Do we want to pay one dollar forty-eight to get one euro? No, we don't. Do we want to pay one dollar and one cents to get one euro? That would be nice, but this is the current situation, right? So our ri where, where, where is the worst box here? Do nothing. Volume ten thousand, and here, right? Looks like, okay. So then let's start to complete this table. So first of all, uh, we're going to make a four, uh, uh, the situation at 25,000, then at 30,000, and then at 10,000, right? So let's start with do nothing. If we do nothing, and at 122, what's our profit or loss? Zero, right? That's our zero. That's our base scenario, OK? The exchange rate didn't change. The volume didn't change. That's what we expect. Is that really going to happen? No. Probably not, right? So if the exchange rate changes to 148, the question is, how much money are we going to lose, right? So now we have to talk about uh, the cost for each customer, right? So if we look back at the spreadsheet, or sorry, at the case, we can check it. We know the number of customers. We know the exchange rate. So all we need to know is the cost per customer. Then we can calculate the uh, <coughs> profit or loss for each one. So let's check the cost per each customer. So. <coughs> Cost per participant is one thousand dollars. Okay, one thousand euros. Sorry. So at this exchange rate, the cost is going to be one thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, or thirty point five million for the sales volume of twenty five thousand. So we can write that in here, right? So if we have twenty five thousand at this exchange rate, it's going to cost thirty point five million, right? Cost per, per dollars. So the cost, we'll just write on the side here, cost is $1,000 per person. Sorry, 1,000 euros. Okay, and then at the 122 exchange rate, that's going to be 12,200, is that correct? 12,000 or 1,220. Okay, and if we multiply 1,220 dollars by the number, this volume, we're going to get 30.5 million. Okay, so that that's here, right? We do nothing. 
Our cost is going for 30.5 million. Does everybody understand that? Yes. We have 25,000 participants. Each participant costs 1220. <coughs> Multiply this by this equals 30.5. Do you want me to do the calculation? You do? 1.22 multiplied by 25,000 equals 25 any way I can do on the calculator. Okay. Maybe an easier way is just to write in the box, right? Equals, this box here is 25,000 multiplied by this one here, which is 1,200, right? It's going to be 30.5 million. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so this is the cost here. If the exchange rate changes to 148 and 101 and we do nothing, what's this number going to be? What's our profit or loss going to be? So do the calculation. Tell me. So here I multiplied the exchange rate, 122, multiplied by the number of participants, right? So at 122 exchange rate, the cost is this much dollars, okay? So you need to find out what's going to be the cost at this exchange rate, right? 1.01. .01. And what is the cost per student at this exchange rate? Okay, that's quite simple. What's the cost per student at this exchange rate? 1010, very good. Did you study maths hard in school? <laughs> What's the exchange rate here? 1,000. Okay, so this is the cost per student, right? Level, level, level. So you might need to multiply these two numbers by 25,000 and subtract from here. Tell me the difference. Okay, so do that calculation. So, what's the total cost here? 25 million. 1? Yes. So we can see which is, a, which is a loss and which is a gain. Which is a negative and which is a gain. Hmm? So we can do this is equals to this one minus 
This one? This one? Yes. Okay. That's a negative. That's a loss, right? Yes. And then here we have? Suffer. This one? Equals what? It's a gain, right? Yes. So equals this one? Minus this one. Okay, so you can see we're making the spreadsheet, right? Here we can see at this exchange rate zero, we can lose 6.5 million from 30 million. That would be all about all our profit, right? That would be about 30%. Okay, that could put us out of business. On the other hand, we could make a gain here if the exchange rate goes to here, right? Which way do we think the exchange rate is going? Can you remember in the last class, what prediction did you say? Some people said the euro was going to get weaker, some people said the euro would get stronger. Hmm? Most people said what? The trend, right? Most people were following the trend. What was the trend? Just to review. The medium term trend, right? Euro, US dollar, the euro was getting stronger, right? So most people expected this would continue. So if the euro gets stronger, it's going to be on this side, right? Yes. So are we going to do nothing here? No, right? But this spreadsheet helps us to understand that maybe we need to do something. If we have forwards and the exchange rate stays at 122, it's going to be zero, right? We're not going to calculate the transaction cost. There's some transaction cost paying for the forward contract, paying the bank the difference between the buying and selling price. We're not going to count that, right? Yes. What about here? What should go here for forwards? And what should go here? Do we need to do a calculation? Forward contract locks this exchange rate. Do we need to do a calculation? No. What goes here and here? Zero. zero and zero. Does everybody understand? Yes. What about options? We need to know some information about the options, right? We need to. What information do we need to know about the options to do the calculations? <coughs> we need to know the <coughs> premium, right? So here we can see the option premium. Okay. So the option premium is five percent of the U.S. dollar notional value. So, for example. If we, 5% uh, of 122 is 61,000, okay? So, let's calculate the premium. We need to know the premium. So, the, we know that the amount that we're making for the contract is going to be this many dollars, right? So, we're going to make the contract to change this at this exchange rate, 122. So, the premium is going to be equals to... This one multiplied by 0 0.05, okay, 5%. So this is going to be the premium, 1.525 million, okay? So who can tell me then what goes into this, this uh, line here? What goes here? If the exchange rate stays at 122, and we use options, what's my profit or loss? Is it zero like forwards? What is it? It's minus. minus what? Premium. Minus the premium, right? So this is going to be equals to minus this one, right? So we'll make a loss of 1.5 million. What about if the exchange rate goes to 1.1? What will the number be? What minus the cost of the option? Five two. Five point two five million minus premium. Okay, and what will be here? Plus the plus the lose six point five and the premium seven point eight million lose eight million. What's the point of making the option contract? Not to move. So what? So what should be the number here? Zero. Zero? Why do we have the minus the premium here and, and zero here? Same as the premium. Premium, right? So we just the same as here at 122. We just lose the premium. We use the contract. 
we can exchange the money at 122, and all we lose is the premium. Okay, so it's equals to minus this one here. Okay, can you can you understand that? So we can put that on a graph, which I made earlier, right? So here is the graph. Okay, so we can just make it bigger just for a minute. Just hold on a second. So if we look at this graph, the blue line is do nothing. Okay? We can, you can see on the graph it's a big risk. Do nothing. Okay? We can lose, we can get that to minus 6,000 here. Okay? On the other hand, we can make a big profit, nearly 6,000 in profit. Or 6 million in profit, right? What about the red line? Always zero. Okay? What about this one? We can take the profit. <coughs> But we have limited our loss. Can you see that? Yes. Doesn't matter how far we go out here, our loss is always limited. Ask, what's the, what's the difference between the red and the green line? More and more on the premium. The premium, right? We have to pay the premium. That's the difference between the red and the green line, right? What's this, what's this space here? Where the green line is still under the red line. What's that space, but not down here? This is where we use the contract. The contract is in our favor. But, so we don't, sorry, we tear up the contract because the exchange rate is in our favor, but we still have to pay the premium. So it depends. We have to start to make more than 1.5 million from the exchange rate, then we start to get into positive territory here. Okay? So if we just discuss with your partner, if this was the only situation, this would be like transaction exposure, right? Just forget about the volume. This is transaction exposure. Which one would you choose? You expect the euro to get stronger. So you're you're expecting to go on this side here. Okay, you're expecting the euro to get stronger. So discuss with your partner. What are you going to choose? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the airline, right? They would have been on this side. They, the experts thought that the exchange rate was going to move in their favor, right? So the guy used forwards, but they said the blue line would have been better for Lufthansa, right, in the end. Okay? So the guy got blamed because he just used. So you have to see which side, what's your prediction, right? Who predicted that the euro was going to get weaker? Some people predicted the euro would get weaker. Yeah, so maybe you might have a different opinion, right? Are you also going to choose a forward contract? What are you going to choose? Going to do nothing? 100% do nothing? No. 
this key? Maybe. Option. 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 I allow you to get your. Allow you to get. If you're right, it allows you to get the profit, right? That you think, but also limits your loss. You don't think you're going to be here, but just in case it is, it's limited. Okay. Or you could, if you want to take a big risk, you could decide to do nothing. Is there just one correct answer? That, it, like mathematics, only one answer to the problem? No, but in this generally, we can see because it's on this side, most people are going to choose forward contract. Okay, that's that's clear enough. Okay, depends how sure we are. So let's move on to the next situation. So the next situation is we have a volume of more people than we expected, okay? So we're going to have to do something extra here. So we didn't cover, we only covered this much, right? We only covered the 25,000, we covered this much, okay? So here is going to be 5,000 more people. So we can make here this time we can multiply by 5,000, right? We can write here, just add in the extras, right? So we have 5,000 more customers. Then if the exchange rate is 122, right? We're going to have the same here. Okay, and then now we are going to have uh, 5,000 multiplied by the extra 5,000 people multiplied by the cost per participant, right? This is our base cost, is 6.1 million, okay? That's even, okay? So what goes in here in do nothing at 122? We do nothing and the exchange rate is 122. Did we make any extra profit or loss? The exchange rate, what number will I put here? Zero. Zero. Okay. What about on 148? Do nothing. What's going to be here? 148 multiplied by this, right? Or sorry, 5,000 multiplied by this. So we can do this kind of calculation for each one, right? This is going to be, just change this to I8. Okay, we, you don't need to do the calculation every time. Just I'll ask you, right? This is 5 million here and 7 million here. Okay? So then my question is, how much is my loss here? It's going to be equals to this one. Uh, and then we have to find the difference between this and this, right? So, first of all, it's going to be equals to what we already said we're going to have this and then we're going to have some extra cost, right? It's going to be minus in the brackets and then we're going to have uh, this minus this, right? So minus about 1.3. So our loss is going to be even more, right? 7.8. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. So then, just uh, we can go on the other side, it's similar again, okay, so what we're, we can look at the filled out one later, right, it's going to be more than five, it's going to be six, right, bigger profit, bigger loss. What about forward contracts? The last time forward was zero, zero, zero. Are we going to be zero, zero, zero now? What about at 122? Still zero? Yes? What about... At 148, zero. How much did we make the forward contract for? 25,000 customers. Okay. Is it going to be zero here? No. What's it going to be? It's going to be minus what? The difference, right, between this and this. Okay. So it's going to be minus 1.3 million, or just the difference between the extra 5,000 customers, right? And here and here, the difference is 1.3 million. Okay? Did we cover these 5,000 students? No. No, it's not covered by the forward contract. Okay? So we made a loss 
compared to the 122 situation of this much, okay? And then similarly on the other side. What about the options contract? It's the same, right? We made an extra loss. At 148, we made an extra loss of 1.3. So all of these, what we can do is it's this line here, minus 1.3. Does everybody understand that? Yes. And then this side is going to be this line here, plus the benefit we get from the 5,000 extra students. Okay, so if we look at the finished, uh, <coughs> the finished uh, one here, we can see that we end up with that difference. Okay, minus 7,000, minus 1,300. So on this side, we've just got minus 1,300 for each one. Okay? The 5,000 uncovered extra students. Minus 1,300 in all cases. Okay? And here we've just added on 1,050. Added on 1,050 and added on 1,050. So the point is we have a different, the graph is a different shape now. <coughs> So, before the red line was, uh, before the red line was in the, here, it was in the middle, right? Yes. But now, it's not in the middle anymore. It's changed, right? It's a little bit, uh, we can see that we, we make a little bit of a loss with the, with the forwards, right? So, red is forwards, and... Blue is do nothing and green is options. Okay, so discuss with your partner which one are you going to use in this case? If we have more participants than we expected, which one are you going to use? So we have 30,000 participants this time. We have 5,000 more than we expected. Okay, this is forwards. We could make a profit of 1.5 or make a loss of 1.5. Whatever, right? This is do nothing. The line is worse than before. It can go now. The last time it was just up to six. This time it's up to eight. Okay? Or we can do the options. The options line is a little bit changed. So what are you going to do? Discuss with your partner. In this case. Forwards. Options. Or do nothing. Right? We think it's going it's going to be on this side. There you can see the numbers, right? This is why we're making the spreadsheets to help us make the decision. So Yun Sang Ho, what what are you going to use? The red line. Again, the red line is is higher, right? Here, you think it's going to be here the red line, so you're still going to use forwards. Yes. You understand that you can make a loss. This time, the last time with forwards, you had no loss, right? Compared to the 122 normal situation. This time you could make a loss of 1.3 million. Okay? Is there any way to completely hedge the volume risk? That's like volume risk, right? Unless you hedge for 30,000 people, but then what happens if it's 25,000 or so on, right? So we can't take out all the risk now. Okay? With the transaction one, we could take out all, all the exchange rate risk. But with the economic exposure, we're not sure about our number of customers. We can't take away all the exchange rate risk. Now we could have a loss of $1.3 million, which is still a lot of money, okay? If we are doing business of $30 million, okay? But it still is the highest on this side. So then let's take a break now for 10 minutes before we look at the last one. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 